Creative is the biggest lever you can pull with Facebook ads in order to improve sales at reduced cost. But do you actually know how to analyze your creative with data in order to do more of what's working and less of what's not? If the answer to that is no, you definitely need to watch this video because you're effectively throwing money away by testing images and videos that are a byproduct of guesswork rather than hard data. The way you get success with Facebook ads is by finding creatives that drive lots of sales at low cost. And if you want to scale these days, you need to have lots of quantity of these high performing low cost creatives in your account and be incrementally improving upon them. So the best way of doing that is by applying an 80-20 principle to your creative testing process, whereby 80% of your resources would be put towards taking what is currently working and making very, very minor changes to it. So I'm gonna do a video where I show you what those changes could be and when it's ready, it'll be linked up here or in the description. But simply, it could be something like changing the color and nothing else. Or maybe you take a one piece of line, like a headline that's in the creative and change it for a different hook. Or you could even add something, add one thing and nothing else. So maybe I could add a third party reviews logo with the five stars and see if that would get better performance to my creative. The goal here is not to try and find a unicorn ad that's gonna absolutely smash the sales at the park and slash your costs. It's all about getting incremental improvements to get more real estate in the account of things that are performing well, but to also gradually improve your performance as you are scaling and always keeping up to date with how the account is performing as you reach different levels of scale where different creatives perform differently. And maybe what was working for you in the past no longer works. And of course, you're gonna put the remaining 20% of your resources towards testing new ideas and making iterations on what's working with much bigger changes added. And by doing this, you mitigate the risk that is associated with trying out unproven formats, which have a much higher chance of failure but equally you want to be doing this because if you do get success, that success could be much greater than if you were just merely iterating on what is currently working. But how do you determine what is working and how do you know which part of the creative that you need to iterate on? Well, we use Facebook's data and we use something called the ADA buyer journey model, which I'm gonna pull up now. So here you see the ADA model, which stands for awareness, interest, desire, and action, and represents the core stages of the buyer journey. Now, before we apply this to Facebook, let's look at it in terms of a real life example so you can understand how this is applied. So we're gonna take the example of someone walking down the street, okay? So someone's walking down the street, they walk past a physical shop, and something in the window catches their eye that they stop to look at, okay? That is the first stage, that is the awareness. That person is now aware of the shop or aware of whatever is in that shop window. They then get curious or interested about what they've seen and they decide to go into the shop. That is the interest stage. Something has made them transition from being aware to being interested enough to go inside the shop. The desire stage is then when they're actually inside the shop do they actually have the desire to buy anything in that shop or was, was it merely just something that was of interest to them and they wanted to go and have a look at it because they were curious but they were never actually there to buy anything, okay? That's the desire stage. Do they have desire or not? And then finally, action. Did they buy something? Did they take action? That is the final action stage. So we can apply this to Facebook uh, or online marketing the exact same way where awareness would be seeing an ad, interest would be going to your website, desire, are you the right person for that website? Do you like everything you see in the website? Does it convince you to purchase? And then of course, action, do you actually go add to the car and buy something? And we can actually get metrics within Facebook to look at how our creatives are performing in each of these stages. So videos, first of all, the metric we're gonna look at for awareness will be the scroll stop. So did it make someone stop scrolling down the feed or scrolling through the stories, wherever the placement is? 
and start to watch the video. The interest stage of that would be click through rate. Did someone click how many, what percentage of people saw the ad and then clicked through to the website? And through play. Through play is basically did someone watch more than 15 seconds of a video? Or if the video was shorter than 15 seconds, did they watch the full video? That's showing they have some interest in what is in the video. Desire, did they, what's the percentage of clicks to purchase? Uh, outbound clicks to purchase. And then action, you wanna be looking at your ROAS and your CPA as well. If we look at images, slightly different. We don't have any way with images of determining how people stop scrolling. So we just have to move straight to interest. We basically combine awareness and interest together and look at the click-through rate of the interest, click to purchase on the desire, and then the ROAS and CPA, of course, for the action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into Ads Manager. I'm gonna show you how you actually set these up in your columns, and then we can look at some examples and tell you how you would go through reviewing your creative. So let's jump into Ads Manager now. Right, so we're inside Ads Manager and you're gonna come up to the column section, first of all, and then scroll down to customize columns to make our custom columns. So before we actually select the columns, we need to create the custom metrics that we want to have. Otherwise, this will just default back to the preset one. So let's go into create custom metric. And the first one that we mentioned was the scroll stop. So let's write scroll stop so we know what it is. And it's a percentage. And I like to put the three seconds as well. So let's do the percentage. And the calculation for this is going to be um, three second video views. And that was two, three second video plays divided by the impressions. Okay, and then in this bottom one, you can either have it only for you or if you wanna share it with anyone else who has access to the business, so they don't have to go and make this themselves, you can do that as well. I'm just gonna take it as only me for now. So create metric. The next one is going to be the through play percentage. And let's put 15 seconds, so we again know what it is. Percentage, and that one will be your through plays divided by your impressions. Okay, and then finally it's going to be the link click to purchase percentage. Again, put it to percentages, and this one will be your purchases divided by your outbound clicks, okay? So not just normal clicks, it has to be your outbound clicks. This is people actually going to your website. And then create that one, okay? So we've created all of them. Now what we're gonna do is create our um, custom column setup. So let's just delete all of these and select the ones we want. So I'm gonna start with amount spent because I like to see that. You know, if something's just spent hardly any money and we're looking at a high ROAS, it doesn't really tell you much. We need to know how much data has actually gone into the, the results we're seeing. So amount spent, we're then gonna take CPM. I like to have a look at that too. And then we get into the things we're talking about. So the first one was your scroll stop. And the one we just created was this one. Um, we then have the through play the click through rate so again take outbound click through rate not um click through rate all so outbound click through rate and what else did we have we had the link click to purchase percentage then we want to take our ROAS and we also want to take our um, cost per purchase. So you way you get that. Let's go to standard events. Purchases. Okay, so you want to take the 
what was I saying? Purchases, let's take the total. Uh, no, sorry, not the total. Let's take the CPA, so the cost of the purchases. And also let's get the add to cart to, as that can be good to see. Okay, so that's, that's the full lineup we've got. Amount spent, the CPM, scroll stop that we created, through play that we created, outbound click through rate, link click to purchase that we created, ROAS, cost per purchase, and cost per add to cart. You're then gonna come down to this bottom left box, click on save as preset and just um, call it something you want, okay? So YouTube video, whatever, creative, you know? Um, and then click apply. And that should be the default one when it's it's also saved here for later, okay? So that's us now got that. And you can see that it started to populate some of these things. These are images, so let's jump on a video example first. Because with the video example, you get to see more information. So let me just refresh this. Okay. So you can see this is all populated. We can we can see our you know our scroll stop, our through plays, click through rate, link to purchase, RAS, cost per purchase, and the cost per add to cart. So when you're analyzing the creatives, you want to start with the end of the funnel and work your way back. So you can see these two videos we have. We're gonna start and looking at the you know sales metrics. So the ROAS. Let's actually filter them by spend first. Oh, I can't, probably because there's only two. Anyway, so we can see the ROAS, you can, you can see that they're very similar in the ROAS, that's why it's good to have the cost per purchase because the ROAS doesn't tell you so much. So here's the cost per purchase as well. You can see this one has done better. And what you're gonna be doing is you're always gonna be comparing them to the averages. Now, this is not a great example because there's only two. So the average is not that wide, but you would probably be doing this with a lot more creatives, looking at what you already have in the account performing, and able to see what is the benchmark of a good creative. There's no point just comparing these against tests. You have to benchmark them against what is this, the performing creatives that you're trying to beat. So we can see here, you know, this is the best one. It is lower than the average. So what I'd be doing is working my way along now. Let's look at the click for rate and that. Okay, so the click for rate, sorry, the link click to purchase. So the desire stage is also very good. The action's good, the desire's good, it's higher than the average. Let's look at the interest stage. And here is a surprising thing. You can see that the interest stage is lower than the average. So actually this other one that's not performing as well has a better click for rate. So that's something we can now take and think, well, what is it in this video, and we need to compare them together, that is making more people want to click through to the website? They're not good people because they're not purchasing, but is there anything that, that's happening in that video that we can learn from in order to improve this one? or your other videos in, if you're talking about them. Then we can look at the through plays. So you can see here the through plays, again, it's below average for this. And also the scroll stop is below the average and below this one. So this is really where I would have the biggest change for this video, the easiest change. I, I could go, well, hang on. So this one is obviously stopping more people on the scroll stop but whatever the content of that video is, is not bringing the right people to the website to purchase. But if I can stop more people by just taking what is working here and putting it on this video, I'm gonna increase the amount of people that are stopping to watch this video, which I, which I know works better, converts better. So just by merely bringing more people in at the front, you're gonna get more people purchasing at the end for the same price. Okay, so you're making incremental changes to each section to try and improve it. But you don't be doing one thing at a time. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't change the middle, the start, the middle and the end of the video. I, would, I maybe would, but I do three iterations. One where I just change the, the, the start, one where I change whatever's happening, you know, for the through play and so on and so forth. Okay, so I know why this one works. This, this top video works because it's a, 
an older guy and it's really authentic looking you know he's looking at his phone like this has like a double chin as an older man and he he's struggling to kind of see if his glass is down and then he talks about how like some really like meaty uh, stuff as a testimonial talking about what happened to him and it's very engaging you want to hear and find out more okay so that's why people are stopping i could literally just take that first thumbnail that is on this video even though the guy's not in this other video take that thumbnail and stick it on the front of that one and i'm instantly going to get more people stopping the scroll because i know people are stopping for the first three seconds of this video if I just do the same thing that happens in the first three seconds of that video, or even just the first second, I'm definitely going to get more people stopping to watch this one. Okay, so that's the kind of thing you'll do. I'm going to show you a table after we look at some more examples where you'll see what to do for each scenario. But that's how I would look at videos. And let's look at images now. So here you can see the images, I've got three. I am gonna sort these by amount spent. Why is this not working? Okay, it's already filtered. Anyway, so you can see that we have the ROAS and you see these two here are obviously doing better than this one. This is the best ROAS at 1.44. If you look at the cost per purchase though, this one has higher ROAS, but actually this one has a better cost per purchase. So this is really why I said, you wanna look at cost per purchase as well, CPA, because ROAS doesn't tell you the whole story. You need to be looking at both metrics and making a judgment call. This could just be that they bought, because this is a, a subscription-based supplement company, they could just buy a different bundle or maybe they, they didn't opt for the subscription and they bought just a one-off trial box. So it's higher ROAS, higher AOV, but it might not be more sales, okay? And we care about sales in a subscription model more than we care about front-end ROAS. So yeah, so that is, um, that's what's happening there. So at the action stage, if we then come down to the desire stage, you can see that the click-through rate on this one is really good. Uh, sorry, not desire. Yeah, desire. The link click to purchase on this one is really good at 2.25%. And this one's even better at 2.46%, both higher than average, but this one is not good at all at 0.87%, okay? Then we come down to the click-through rate and something interesting happens. So this one that was our top ROAS ad is actually the lowest click-through rate and way below the average. This one that was our second best ROAS but our top CPA ad has, you know, a decent click for rate, but this one that was our worst ad in terms of conversions actually has the best click for rate by far. So why is that? And of course with images, we don't have scroll stop and through play as mentioned. Well, I'll tell you why this is. This is basically because this image is, it's not misleading people, but it is not showing what the product is it is just creating a lot of curiosity. So the, the image is basically representing blood pressure by using two hoses, a hose that is flowing normally and a hose that's not flowing, just with some text that says starts working in as little as three, three minutes or something, okay? So it's a very strong hook and it's a very thought-provoking image, but you don't see the product, you don't really know what it is. So all it's gonna do is bring lots of traffic to the website, but they might not necessarily be the people who are relevant or are coming to buy. They're just curious as to what is going on with this strange ad. And then when they get to the landing page and they find out actually, this is a, a, a product, a supplement, I don't really care. I wanted to just find out about what, what the hose was all about. They're gonna bounce, they're not gonna buy, okay? So that's why you see a big click through rate here but we can still take that as a way to try and incrementally improve these. So maybe not the hoses, but the the headline I talked about where it says, starts working in as little as three minutes. I would then take this creative here, which has shown itself to convert well and try and incrementally improve the click for rate by simply adding that headline to it. Okay, it's a very easy thing to do. Stick the headline on and maybe that's gonna improve it. 
and then yeah and then obviously the people that are going to come into the website are more relevant because we already know the rest of the ad's going to bring the relevancy it shows you the product it shows you the benefits and things so there might be uh just a, a win-win situation from doing that so that's really how you look at it and then i have this diagram here which shows you what to do in each scenario so if you have good results at the awareness stage good results at the interest stage and good results at the desire stage you're going to get a good action there's nothing you need to do okay you've really hit all these things right but how can we tweak things that are not working so if you have good awareness good interest but bad desire you're going to get bad action and some of the reasons for bad desire are paid speed issues unclear product or a misleading ad as is the one I mentioned. It's not misleading, but it's unclear product. Lack of trust. Is there a price shock? Is there unexpected fees? So you can take this result from your creative and understand that actually my creative is doing well in awareness, is doing well in interest. There's a problem with my landing page. I need to fix that. Or my, my landing page just doesn't tie in with my creatives. Maybe I need to make them more obvious, reduce some of the traffic, but it's more relevant traffic, okay? So you can look at that. If you have bad awareness, good interest and good desire stages, you're gonna get average action. And the reason for bad awareness could be weak hooks. Um, maybe you need to change headlines. Easy fix if it's videos is simply just change thumbnails as I mentioned in my example. You can just take image thumbnails that are not related to the video and stick one on. Like a lot of time, if you take your best performing image creative and stick it on your best performing video as the thumbnail, then you create like a, a video now that has both your best assets combined. Okay, so there's something you can do there. And this final one, if you have good awareness, bad interest and good desire, you're also gonna get average action, but the reason is gonna be you're bringing the attention of the wrong audience. So we're getting a high click for rate, but they're not the right uh, audience to actually click and purchase. And there's also maybe weak messaging there. Okay, and that really is all there is to it. So remember, you're looking at the big picture, you're gathering all your data, looking at your creatives, and you're gonna be asking yourself, why is this working or why isn't this working? Because that's so important as well. You need to understand why something isn't working as I showed you in my example. And then you're gonna change one variable at a time when you're trying to iterate on creative. So if you change too many variables, you're not gonna know what is the thing that has given you the better or worse result than the original, but also you're, make, you're changing too many things so it's too different from the original, okay? So change one variable at a time. Of course, you can test like three different versions of the original creative, each with one different variable change. So you can have quicker testing. You can test them all at one time and maybe one of them works, two don't, or maybe two of them work and one doesn't. You know, it gives you faster ability to find a creative winner and you can test them using dynamic creative uh, that's why I recommend you can go and watch my tutorial on how to run Facebook ads where I talk about using dynamic creatives to run your creative to test your creatives but that is essentially it so you're going to do that um, I hope this video has helped creative testing creative analysis is not something I see talked about a lot but it's super important like creative especially with an account where we're running broad is the thing that is the is the, <laughs> the the lever you pull it is the thing that makes the difference these are social platforms creative is super important so if you can really get into the habit of analyzing your creative get good at taking the actual data and learning how you can break down those creatives and improve each part of them you're gonna you're gonna see patterns you're gonna have a system so that whenever you create new creative for different accounts you know whenever you go into your new ideas phase that that 20% of the 80-20, you almost will be more efficient in generating the creative because you know what are the things that always work in this account and you can employ them without having to just randomly chuck stuff at the wall. But also you're gonna be always iterating on what's working and you're gonna over time just fucking kill it to major success. So 
yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys, and I will see you in another one very soon.